and welcome to the Where People Meet podcast, the event technology podcast for the worldwide meetings and events industry. I'm your host, Mitch Malinsky, head of sales here at Feedloop, and today I'm joined by the one and only Jason Thompson, founder and CEO of Speak Up, Get Results, a next-gen consulting agency that helps clients to develop the skills that make every presentation, talk, pitch, panel, and conversation the very best of their career with coaching, workshops, keynotes, masterclasses, and more. Now, for more than 25 years, the world's smartest organizations have turned to Jason to engage audiences, win business, accelerate careers, and ultimately communicate more effectively. Whether it's writing a better presentation, coaching a pitch team, or inspiring the development of better content, Jason delivers the helpful process, landmark insights, and game-changing outputs that help you break through. Now, for me personally, as someone who often delivers keynotes and workshops on behalf of Speedloop, I'm incredibly excited for today's conversation and I'm going to be scribbling down notes throughout on how to improve my presentation game. Audience, be sure to listen closely. I think this is going to be a really insightful conversation. But Jason, before we get started, just want to say thank you very much for taking the time to join us today. I'm really looking forward to it. Um, where, are, where are you calling in from? I am in Bradford, Ontario. You always pass my house as you uh, drive to your cottage or your best friend's cottage, drop in sometime. We have amazing Mexican food in this town, believe it or not, oh. because they have all these Mexican restaurants for the field workers. And boy, there's some good food here. Okay, noted. That is, uh, that's really good to know. But um, again, I, I, I think this is going to be a very fun conversation. So thank you very much. To Thanks get us started, of course, of course. But Jason, to get us started, would love if you could tell everyone a little bit about yourself and your background in the Canadian meetings and events industry. I tell people I'm a content sledgehammer. So if you're listening, this is my value to you, right? I, I for, for the entire length of my career in events uh, and recognition and incentives and all that sort of good stuff, I've served as a creative director, a copywriter, a speaker coach, you know, just anything to do with how do you get the message across? And I say I'm a content sledgehammer because my goal is to help the audience to see things differently. You know, I, I'm the connection guy, right? And so yep. because of that, you know, I try and build products and services that help those connections, you know, everything from workshops and coaching and keynotes, all that sort of stuff. It, I've been doing this for a very, very long time, and I still can't believe, like, as you're reading my bio this morning, I'm like, wow, that, you wrote that. Like, I wrote that. And thinking, that's good. I, I get that. I, 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 still get, I still get butterflies thinking people pay me to do this for a living. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's incredible. And you built yourself a very recognizable personal brand. I know I see you delivering keynotes and running workshops and being an MC at a lot of amazing Canadian events. So I'm, I'm thrilled to have you on the podcast today. But Jason, you mentioned you've been in the industry for quite some time. So let's go way, way back to the start. When did you first get a taste of the wonderful world events and, and what hooked you? I have to thank Tony Chapman and uh, Andrew Crichton for this, who were founders of Communique back okay. in the 80s. Uh, I went to TMU, formerly Ryerson University. And every week, yep. our, our professor, Dr. Robert Gardner, would take us on a field trip. And one week, the, a week that I was, I was infamous for skipping, like just not going to school. <laughs> and I was going to skip, but I decided I'd go the day of the field trip we went to communicate. And I'd been struggling with trying to figure out what I wanted to do in the writing world because I always thought okay. that I wanted to be a writer. And here we go. We get herded into communicate. We get herded into the boardroom and they shut the doors. And what they show me is a piece of magic. What it is, is a multi-image show. So back with, they still did projector banks. And I think they were just retiring the projector banks of, you know, 30 projectors putting on these beautiful modules. And Communique yep. had a famous one. It was set to Rudyard Kipling's poem, If. And I still, like, I have goosebumps right now remembering the moment because it was like, 
you, it clicked. I was like, I want to be here. I want to do this. And the chaperone for the day was a guy by the name of Jim Ray, who is the creative director, still works in this industry. And I attached myself to him, which I think scared him for quite some time <laughs> until he realized I really wanted to be here. And he got me my first job. I worked at Mariposa back in okay. the day as a junior writer, worked my way up to creative director in about four years, and then went out on my own and served many companies as a creative director and later as a content director. It's been a blast the entire time. Wow. So you mentioned you were there for four years, you got promoted to creative director and went out on your own. When you went out on your own, did you immediately start, speak up, get results? Or, or when, when did that side of your business come into place? And I have a how did it come to fruition? I, yeah. So I have a consultancy called Creative Mercenary. It's been around since 94. Okay. I still have my email address from April 1994. You have no idea how much spam I get to that email address. It's <laughs> extraordinary. So I did that for a while and it took me a while to come to the speaker speech writer gang. You know, I was a traditional copywriter. It took me 10 years to be a good writer. Uh, yep. That's just part of the game, right? You craft your voice. I got hired to do a job for Nissan and I got hired over uh, the Toronto's best speech writer that Tr Toronto Life had actually given this guy the designation best speech writer. They hired me because I was cheap. And I realized I had something to, to offer for this. So over the years, it's, it's taken a little while to get there. But Speak Up, Get Results itself probably started to appear just before the pandemic as, you know, a program that does keynotes. So I'm a keynote speaker, yep. uh, workshops, emceeing. And I now actually I'm launching products now. I've got these awesome, like these cars, which are, you know, like these are tools for engagement. And okay. these ones are starters for your presentation. You know, I've got a program like called the, and everything's got a clever sugar name, right? So sugar packet for those things. The sugar drop is a 21 day email campaign that will guide you through the development of creating your own, um, your own presentation. I've got okay. these sugar yeah. crash courses that are one hour courses. So it's basically, it's an epic place to be able to help people have incredible conversations and presentations are the conversations I'm focusing on right now. Fantastic. Okay. So in, in terms of speak up, get results, who are the type of clientele that you appeal to? Are you, are you reaching out to organizations? Are you dealing with individuals who are public speakers? Who's a good fit for your services? Right now, I like to focus on the enterprise market and okay. the conference and communications market. So I get hired by organizations that are putting on large scale conferences to help their speakers become better speakers. And that happens a lot in the corporate space. But yep. I did this for C2 Montreal a few times where I also moderated sessions. You know, the, the idea being uh, the focus on the, the enterprise side. I absolutely positively do coach individuals and I get people who are curious and intrigued about that all the time. But I find that when I can get my arms around an entire conference, all of the presentations can be better. That's fantastic. And for me, I would say that public speaking is a critical skill for everyone to have. This is regardless of whether you deliver keynote presentations for a living. I, I think just being a good public speaker, being able to communicate effectively, um, being able to formulate arguments and so forth, all of that is incredibly important, regardless of whether you're actually up on stage. But in your opinion, why is this such a big passion for you? Like, why is mastering your pitch and becoming an engaging, sto sto an engaging storyteller a valuable skill for people who are not actually going up on stage and delivering those presentations? It's a passion because people do it wrong. 90% of the more than 500 presentations I coach every year begin life where the presenter does not understand why they're presenting in the first place, what activation that they want. So if you want to change anything, okay. if you want to change somebody's mind, you want to change an approach, you want to change the world, you got to understand how to connect with people and win over an audience. Too many people think about first their PowerPoint, their deck, and then think about the words that are coming out of their mouth. And the words are only part of the game, right? It's uh, the line I love to use is more than words drawing on that 1991 extreme 
power ballot, right? Is there's a lot going on in the brain and the audience, right? So how are you accessing that? How are you, are you using things like repetition? And are you crafting an engaging first minute? Do you have a specific ask that helps the audience win at the end? You know, there's hundreds and hundreds of things that you can do to be a better presenter. I try to distill them all down, but ultimately, if I can walk away where presenters have, somebody says, you know what, that was something valuable. That's the line I like to use. Meaningful, interesting, relevant, and valuable to me. If, if you can deliver that, that's yep. great. Last week, I did a workshop at the University of Guelph, and a okay. kid came up to me. A student came up to me at the end, and he said something, the best line ever, which is, you just ruined workshops for me for the rest of my life, right? <laughs> And I was like, that's great, because that's that's what I'm trying to do, is I not just show you how to do the skill, but actually create an experience for you that's something that's outstanding. That's great. I That's that's fantastic feedback. But, Jason, I know you've got a lot of tips on how to deliver the best presentation, and a lot of them are processes that you've developed over the years. Before we dive into those, what are like what are the biggest don'ts? for delivering an effective presentation? What are things that just make you shake your head and and things that you recommend people steer clear of if they're trying to be an effective public speaker? I talk about this in one of my keynotes. It's the first element. And there are a number of things that you can do. Autopilot is a big one. You know, we tend okay. to just take the last presentation that we do and iterate it. And it may be right. based on bad foundation. That one I see a lot. The second is is selfishness. And, and again, you're not selfish. You're amazing, right? But the thing is, is that a lot of presentations are about, here's what I want to say. And the truth is, is that great presentations are not about that. They are entirely in service of the audience. It's not what you say. It's how they hear. And if you focus on the audience, you'll learn that you can squish those presentations down to be a lot more uh, focused, a lot tighter, and a, a lot more valuable to the audience. And again, that that idea of neuroscience, which was a weird hobby that I had over the pandemic is learning yeah. behavioral economics and how audiences absorb information. Lots of stuff that people don't realize. We can only hold on to three short-term memory elements at any given time, right? Audiences disengage 100% of the time for every block of 15 minutes. So you're using skill sets like navigation, scannability, uh, storytelling, to be able to ensure that audiences stay on the hook, remember your message, and activate your message. Those are some really good points. And I do want to unpack that, but one of the other items I wrote down, because I was doing some digging on your website, pulling whatever information I could have, and what stood out to me is this five-step sugar stack process for presentations and pictures. Now, I don't want to ask you to give too much away because I know this is one of the components of a paid masterclass that you offer, but very high level, can you break down this process for our listeners and give us an understanding of what this is and why it works? The, the, the sugar stack is the button that unlocks everything. And there are sugar stacks for presentations. I have them for pitches. I have them for copywriting, all sorts of stuff like that. But for presentations, the five steps are basically purpose, audience, structure, engagement, and performance. And of those, if you're going to drill down and focus on one, audience is the most overlooked of the bunch. You know, okay. are you profiling your audiences? Are you doing crowdsourcing beginning before? You know, if you've got a national sales meeting that you're doing and you're the CEO, you know, don't give me the chronology narrative. Here's what I did last year. Here's what I where we are this year. Here's where we're going next year. Do what I do, which is demand to speak with members of the audience and understand what they want from your presentation. When you mm -hmm. have a better sense of that, you know what to deliver. Because the idea is, is you deliver enough to the audience so they give you what you want in return. It's a concept called reciprocity. That's a big part of the whole behavioral economics approach. Right. So you've mentioned this a couple of times. Don't focus on what you can provide and all of the experience, all the expertise that you have as a speaker. Instead, focus on the audience, figure out why they're coming to this event, why they're yes. listening to your presentation, and then tailor your your pitch, your presentation, whatever it is, to that value prop. Is, is that correct? 
That is exactly it. You know, when you okay. when you live in service of your audience, you will still get your content across. I'll give you a really simple example, and it's Please. a pitch situation. You'll okay. see a lot of times, you know, organizations will begin their pitch with, "Let's let me tell you about us." Right? That's a that's a critical flaw. It's really should be, "Let's talk about you and your challenge and the mm-hmm. case studies that you deliver, the stories that you deliver." are stories that you did. So they learn about you in a more organic way while you stay focused on their problem and their needs. That's the key. Audience first. And this, like what you're mentioning there really just comes down to sales 101. Like this is what I do every day is I'm a salesperson. I represent Feed Loop. I hop on calls with prospective clients and companies that are looking for event technology. And that is really the first thing that you learn as a salesperson is don't go on a big rant of here's feed loop. This is what we can do. And this is why we're awesome. Instead, be inquisitive, do the discovery process, ask questions and get an understanding of why are you in the market? What are the pain points you're currently feeling? What are some aspirations you have? And then deliver your pitch, communicate a value proposition tailored to that. So it really is about understanding the audience and tailoring that communication. It's it's amazing. I find how we all know that. And then when the rubber hits the road, how we get away from that really quickly. Yeah. And it happens in everything. It happens not just in sales, situation, personal. You know, you go on a date and, you know, you want to ask all the questions, but then yep. you get into this loop where you start talking about yourself. That's understandable. And especially for presentations, I can completely understand why that might be the default, because not everyone is comfortable going up on stage. Um, I myself, I get a lot of butterflies. I'm oftentimes quite nervous when I go up and deliver a presentation. Now, for you, I've actually had the pleasure of seeing you in action. The first time I saw you was uh, a moderator on a panel that I was on back at CME Expo in 2022, and you're you're natural. You're just very comfortable on stage, and I can tell that you get a lot of energy from the people in the room and the audience, but that's not how the majority of people operate. I think most people are very nervous about going up in front of a room full of peers and and experts and trying to deliver a presentation. So what are your recommendations for people who aren't comfortable in the spotlight? How can you venture out of your comfort zone and become half the public speaker that you, Jason Thompson, are? And here's the deal. I didn't start here. I started where you are. I started as a nervous presenter who fumbled, who didn't know. I, I knew and profiled myself so I could understand what I was good at. So I have presence on stage. Um, I'm really, I'm a really good storyteller. I'm big on bringing context. You know, like there are moderators out there like Ron tight who are, who's hilarious. I'm not a comedy guy. I'm, I'm, I am funny, but I'm not Ron tight, funny. I'm not stand up comedian funny. What I am is I can bring and make sense of content that you're dealing with in the first place. The first thing you have to understand is not everybody is actually cut out to be a great speaker i i had never made the nhl as a goaltender um, but i still play street hockey so i can still get better and and here are a few things i always recommend people can do the first one is build a better message you know don't say everything about everything in so many ways you know i tell my kids you know if you want an a b if you want to get a b on an essay tell me what if you want to get an a tell me why and that's the thing if you're going to present bring that value through showing why or how the second thing is be Merv. Merv is a, a little initialism that I created, which stands for meaningful, interesting, relevant, and valuable. Every right. single thing that okay. you need to do. So if you present numbers a lot, like even if you're not on a big stage, if you, you're doing the biweekly numbers update, don't avalanche your audience with a bunch of like non-contextualized numbers. Give them stories that make sense of those numbers. I, I deal with a lot of financial services leaders and it takes time to get them to wrap their head around. Don't just give me a numbers dump. People don't remember numbers, but they do remember stories. Right. The third thing, this is a big one, rehearse more. We do not rehearse enough. It's critical that you need to be able to really build on your performance. I give my keynote 
on uh, Speak Up Get Results for presentations about 60 times a year. Oh, wow. And I rehearse every single time. I don't rehearse the whole thing every single time. But, you know, for example, I, I was in the car. I was driving the University of Guelph last week. And the, the opening of the presentation is simply me staring at the audience counting to four, right? And I do it all the time. One, two, three, four. And in the car, I'm just driving and I'm, I'm working on the first minute. And I'm like, what if I did it like this? One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And that, I did that. I went and did it a little bit differently, like sped it up. Now, why am I doing the one, two, three, four? Well, you've got to hire me to actually see why <laughs> I do that in the beginning of the presentation. But it's a critical yeah. way to arrest your audience overall. So those are the three. Build better messages, be Merv, and rehearse more. And if you're still freaking out before you take stage, box breathing, right? Box breathing is a yeah. really great way to get your mindset. I, I'm taking this uh, mental health course right now for uh, where I'm learning about mental fitness. And they're, they give you all of these wonderful little techniques that you can use to take you out of the moment to reset you. And over time, when you do that, like the box breathing and things like that, if you don't just do it right before you take the stage, but it becomes a skill that you develop, it'll mm -hmm. actually slow your heart rate and calm you down. Yes. So I know breath work is very good for that, like delivering a presentation beforehand, but also just putting your body through stressful situations a lot. You just get used to it over time. Um, one of the things I do every morning is I have a very cold shower. And initially it sucked. Like it was awful. Two minutes in the cold shower, getting out, you'd be jittering and shivering and not having a good time. But now every morning I look forward to it. I don't need a coffee. It wakes me up. And I find right. I'm much better equipped to handle stressful situations and think clearly during those situations because I'm just getting used to that over time. So that's a, that's a really interesting process you have there is the box breathing before del delivering a presentation. You mentioned rehearsal is a really key point. What does that look like for you? Are you rehearsing in front of people and getting their feedback? Are you recording yourself and then listening back over it? Like, what are some common rehearsal tips and techniques that you can share with the audience? First one is understand, and there's probably three. The first one is understand who you are as a speaker. What are your speaker strengths? For me, mm -hmm. it's vulnerability, energy, and expertise. Yours okay. might be trust, right? Things like that. So find that person who you are and be that best version of yourself on stage. Authentic. When you get to the rehearsal, do a rough draft. So do the whole thing once uh, and you'll know where you're not feeling great and then go back and start sharpening them. So like your introduction is a really great place. Keep doing it over and over again until it feels really good. You don't have to rehearse for hours at a time. This is where your camera can be helpful. So one is knowing yourself. Two is that rough draft rehearsal. And you can get your camera involved. And then you get to your polish rehearsal. So at the end, once you've done the rough draft and you've kind of rehearsed a couple of things over and over again, either in that rough draft or in the couple of days leading up, then get somebody involved. And when you get somebody involved, you do this. You say to that person at the end of the presentation, what did you remember? Mm. That's all you want to ask, not how did I do or where was I stand, all that sort of stuff. And I can get into that. I can get into like where you stand, all that sort of thing. But that question, what do you remember, is the question because it shows is were you in service of your audience and right. are they able to absorb your content effectively and spit it back to you. There's a great study out of Minnesota about uh, teachers. So they took teachers from like kindergarten all the way up to high school and they were, they were teaching a class and they would stop teaching in the middle of the class and ask the kids, what am I talking about? And the younger grades, about 80% could actually answer that. By the time you got to grade eight, it's about 48% and that number will continue to drop off. We have poor memories, poor listening skills. And if you don't set up some of the strategic elements that you require in your presentation, things like scannability and headlining and behavioral economics and associations and triggering. If you're not doing that, there's a good chance they're going to forget your stuff. You've seen it here on the podcast. I have repeated the key phrases over and over again, right? So that's critical. And, th and I'll do it right now. Like it, again, rehearsal, rough draft mm -hmm. rehearsal. First of all, know who you are, rough draft rehearsal, 
polish rehearsal where you do it in front of somebody and ask them, what do you remember? You do those three things and you'll make the difference. That's fantastic. Now, Jason, I've got a couple more questions that I'd like to ask you, but they are going away from tips on how to deliver an effective presentation and how to become the best communicator possible. So before I move on to this last slate of questions, do you have any any final words or any final tips that you want to share with the audience on how to become the best communicator you possibly can? I, I would stick with the audience, but where I'm going to go is have a purpose to what you're doing. And again, that purpose is the first step of the sugar stack. Now, I'll ask that of speakers all the time. Why are you presenting? Why are you presenting? And they'll, they'll always give me a content. You know, I work with a technology company and I'll say, you know, why are you presenting? And, and they'll say, well, I want people to understand, you know, kind of the, the boundaries of cloud, for example. And then I'll ask them this. I'll say, well, what do you want your audience to specifically do as soon as you finish presenting? And they're like, oh, I want them to email me. And I'm like, well, that's why you're presenting. We right. forget that the activation point is the single most important part. A presentation is either the beginning or the end of a conversation. The beginning gets you kind of like understanding. The end closes a deal, right? Understand yep. what it is you're trying to get out of the deal, then give your audience what they want so that they'll give you that back and you'll see a difference in your skills as a presenter. Don't just get up there and say, I'm going to dump a bunch of words at people and hope I wear them down. It got me to two marriages. That's how I did it. But <laughs> as I move forward, I understand it's really about them. Yep. Well, Jason, these have been some phenomenal tips on public speaking, becoming an effective communicator. I'm really excited to listen back to this and take some notes. Um, but the last item I'd like to pick your brain on before we let you go today is your radio show. I believe it's Saga 960 AM. You deliver it every Wednesday morning. And if memory serves me right, it's, it's Career Hack 100. So it's, it's called the playbook, and we did something called the Career Hack 100. Took an okay. entire year where we counted down the 100 skills that you need to be effective uh, at, at anything in your career. And I co-host that with Jen Glynn, who is the past president of Site Global. Right now, we're doing the future of work. And that's going to, later this year, I suspect okay. it's going to evolve to support the book that I'm writing called Misconnected, which is about how we connect with one another. But ah. that Career Hack 100, I want to give you three of the best career hacks, my favorites. Please, that'd be fantastic. The first one was don't be a jerk. And truly, this is something that I, I'm surprised I have to remind people, but at times is you have to understand that in the world of business, how to be effective, how to be uh, you know really empathetic, good listener, yep. and not give poor feedback. Second one is watch more TV, which is really my shorthand for expose yourself to as much stuff as you can. Read more, listen more, watch more, experience okay. more. Part of the reason for that is you can give that as a gift. I mean, you've heard lots of great examples that I use today. Uh, you know, was that, what did I just finish watching? Something, uh, there's something wrong with Fleischman. So Fleischman's in trouble. Oh my gosh. Okay. A masterclass on great empathy, the way that they actually set up that series. Outstanding. And the third is defy logic. And that idea is, is that. We think that many of the things that we do in life are logic problems, but human beings are irrational. And when it comes to communications, they will not give you back what you want. So if you're in a fight with your spouse, right, and you're working really hard to get them to see your perspective and to show them that you're right, you're, defy you're actually doing something that you think is logical. The defying logic is stop, be empathetic, be right. compassionate, and then they'll open up and start to listen to you. If you start to just keep trying to get your narrative across, they will not be uh, so receptive to that. So don't be a jerk. Watch more TV and defy logic. Those are the, my three favorite of the 100 career hacks that we did last year. Love it, Jason. And I, I can see how those apply just outside of your career, in life in general. These are some really good tips. And... I know I want to continue the conversation. So I imagine some of the listeners, some of the audience members are going to want to connect with you and learn more and, and tap into your expertise. So what is the best way for our listeners to connect with you and learn more about the various services that you provide? 
Easiest place to find me is speakupgetresults.com and okay. subscribe to the newsletter. I have a newsletter that comes out every month and it's it's not it's not a sales newsletter. There's an infographic, there's an edition of the radio show, which is also a yep. podcast available on Apple and Spotify and, and uh, Amazon Music as well. But that's a great place to start is to say Jason has tons and tons of free resources he likes to share through the blog and through the newsletter. Start there. I, I don't know that I get very many unsubscribes on that. And the second place you can find me is where I like to play every day, which is LinkedIn. So yep. Jason Thompson, T-H-O-M-S-O-N. And again, I post three times a week. I try to make it the best uh, value that I can. So I put my infographics up. There are versions of them. Uh, what was it? I put up a post yesterday about the chronology narrative, about how people, CEOs are wasting time right now and how you really want to structure a presentation effectively. Yeah, I follow you on LinkedIn. I get a lot of value out of the posts you put up. So thank you for that. You're doing a great service to the community. Um, but last last item here, you mentioned you're writing a book. Yes. So when when is that going out? Very high level. What's the premise? I'm hopeful of having Misconnected ready for IMEX Americas this fall, nice. yep. where I'm already on the docket. So I hopeful we be, be uh, presenting that Misconnected. We have more tools than ever before to connect effectively with each other through communications, and we're doing a worse job at it. So mm. what it is, is the book is divided up into a series of about 54 page rules, rules that you need to understand and be effective with so that okay. you can go out there and build the very, very best communications possible. So you want to have great conversations. You want to deliver an incredible presentation, a great pitch, a Q&A, a media appearance, whatever that looks like, right? These rules will help you navigate the new reality. And they are things like hyper empathy, right? Disconnection, uh, mm -hmm. engagement through storytelling, like their uh, reaction versus response. These are four of the rules that are already in, in the book. Beautiful. Well, please let us know when that's out. We'll share it with the audience. We'll get it all plastered over social media. I'm going to pick up a copy for myself, of course. But Jason, it was a pleasure. Thank you so much for your time today. Um, I, I just had a lot of fun. And again, I'm excited to listen back to this, take some notes, because I know there's a lot of valuable tidbits in this conversation. But to our listeners, that wraps up our Where People Meet podcast episode on how to become a better communicator with the one and only Jason Thompson. Everyone, thank you very much for your time today. And we'll see you next time on the Where People Meet podcast. Bye for now.